Hi everyone, it's Charity here from Accessible Nutrition. I'm one of the co-authors of a cookbook called Easy Healthy Tasty and if you're watching this video then you're probably already on our Facebook page um, or our YouTube channel uh, and you'll know all about it. Um, but tonight we're here in my kitchen and we're just going to cook dinner together because at this time I think we all know that uh, things are a bit odd. They're not really how they usually are. And it is how it is and so we just got to get by so in order to get by what I've done is uh, tried to put together a dinner for us tonight now it's not exactly the recipe that I would normally cook but that's because I couldn't get half of the things that I would normally cook with in the supermarket over the last few weeks so tonight we're gonna cook my tuna and lemon pasta but I don't have any pasta it's all gone. It's done in my pantry at all. Uh, and I don't have any lemons. But what I do have is limes because in our backyard, we're lucky enough to have a lime tree that's got some limes on it at the moment. And instead of pasta, uh, I've got, I'll see if I can figure out how to turn this around and show you. Here we go. We've got some quinoa and rice uh, combination there instead. Uh, so I've already got that cooking because that takes about 25 minutes. You've got to be just a little bit more prepared with it than you would with pasta. Um, but I've got it cooking away. Uh, it's simmering right here. I'm just giving it a little stir, if you can see there. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because, like I said, I couldn't find any pasta. And I couldn't even find any plain rice uh, when I went to the shops. All I could find, the last bag of this rice and quinoa mix. So uh, we're going to go with it and we'll see what happens. So I've already done some chopping because I'm here in the kitchen by myself tonight uh, and my children are off watching television in all honesty while I make this video for you. Uh, and because I'm doing this by myself, I don't have anyone else to hold the camera. So I've had to do some chopping because chopping one-handed is probably not uh, a particularly safe thing for me to do. Um, so if we have a look here, you can see I've already chopped up some onion. Now I only had one little tiny onion, so I've added some celery to that as well. And the other things that we're gonna put in our uh, mixture tonight, are obviously our tuna, which I've got here, I've just opened it. Because it was a big can, it didn't have a ring pull, so I had to use um, the can opener. So you'll need one of those for this recipe too. Uh, I found some parsley, only a little bit, but it's better than nothing uh, from our garden. And um, I've also got, this is a picture so that you can see it close up of the brown rice and quinoa mix. Now, if you've never eaten this kind of uh, mix before, what you'll find is that with brown rice and with quinoa, it's got quite a nutty flavour. It's really quite nice. So if you haven't eaten it before, but you see it in the shops and it's available at the moment and there's nothing else that you would rather buy, just buy a packet and give it a go. Um, like I said to you, it takes a bit longer to cook than uh, normal rice, uh, but it's really worth it. It tastes really nice. And I'm hoping that it'll work well with my um, uh, combination that we've got going here tonight. Otherwise, we'll find out together that it was not a very good choice. So I've got my pan on at the moment. Um, and just bear with me while I try and do things like open the oil one-handed. So we're gonna put just a little bit of oil in our pan here. I'll flick it around in a moment so you'll be able to see it. Um, but like I said, one-handed. So we do what we can. And I'm just gonna bring over the things that I need to put in there. Oh, let me see, can I turn this around? Here we go, just, just shaking it in because that's what I can do one-handed. We'll pick up these last little bits together. Put them in the pan and I've got a spoon here. So we're just gonna give these a little stir to coat them evenly with the oil. And then we're gonna leave that to cook for a little bit. So while that's doing its thing, I thought it might be nice to talk about some other alternatives that are in the supermarket at the moment, because I know that when, uh, if you're new to cooking or if cooking's not something that you're particularly confident with, then when you go to the supermarket and you can't find your pasta or you can't find your rice or you can't find the frozen veggie mix that you would normally buy and those sorts of things, it can be a bit overwhelming and it can be hard to know, what do I do? Where do I even start? Uh, and so I thought we'd just talk a little bit about the things that I've noticed in the supermarket that might be of use to you. So one of those things is, um, even if there are no frozen vegetables available in your supermarket when you go shopping, if cutting is something that uh, cutting up vegetables is something that is just not something that you're able to do for yourself, there are often some other alternatives there. And in all honesty, some of them 
they don't taste quite as nice. They're not exactly the same, but they're better than nothing. And at the moment, I think that's something that we just need to be aware of is uh, doing the best we can with what we have available. So you might find uh, near, um, I think it's often near the, um, like the pasta, like the packet mix pasta mixes and those sorts of things sometimes you'll be able to find dehydrated vegetables. Now these are handy to have uh, just sitting in the cupboard anyway because they do last a long time. Um, but especially in times like these, they can be quite useful. Uh, a better option probably if you can find any would be canned uh, vegetables. But I know that in my local supermarkets, again, there haven't really been all that many of those around either lately. So I'm just gonna give this a quick little stir and we'll keep going. So I've got my onion and my celery because that was what I had available to me um, sizzling away there, just cooking because we know that as we, um, as the onion softens, uh, it becomes, it, it gives a nice flavour there, it gets nice and sweet. Uh, so I don't really have this on a very high heat because it's a very big uh, burner on my stove. It's only, I don't know if you can see there, it's really down quite low. Uh, because I don't need it up m much higher than that. If your burner is smaller, you might need it um, a bit higher. We want it to be sort of sizzling, but not, um, not burning, obviously. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do, and uh, this really is a super, super, super simple recipe. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to be a little bit careful because this might splatter a little bit, but we're just going to add our can of tuna, really. Not difficult at all. Now, I haven't drained this tuna because... I actually want the moisture from it um, and it was just tuna in in spring water this one because that way we can season it to taste if you've only got tuna in brine well you can use that that's fine but it makes it a bit harder to be in control of uh, of how much of how salty that um, that final product is this way we can make some adjustments ourselves so you can see there that it's actually stopped bubbling away because of the extra liquid uh, and the, the tuna that I've added. So I've just turned the heat up just a really small amount. While I'm here, I'm just gonna stir my brown rice and quinoa. I'll just have a little look there. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me try and bring it, bring you closer. Can you see that the quinoa, which is the brown stuff there, kind of looks like it's growing a little bit. Well, that's what happens when you cook quinoa and it's, uh, and it's just about ready, is it kind of gets these little tails. So you'll know that, um, that you're doing it right if you've got those tails. <laughs> um, so we'll just give this a little bit of a stir. And there's really not a whole lot more that we're gonna need to do to this, in all honesty. I'll flick you back around to me. The other thing, that we're going to add to this is some peas. I'm sorry, I'm bending over here, looking, getting to my microwave because we had some frozen peas. When I went to the shops on Saturday, the only frozen vegetables I could get was a peas, corn and carrot mix uh, and just plain frozen peas. Uh, and so that's fine, but we've used up most of the plain, uh, we've used up most of the peas, corn and carrot mix. So tonight we're just going to add peas and let me see if I can turn you around. I'm going to have to use my other hand to do that. Put the peas down first. Okay. So this is bubbling away. These peas, you can just add them in frozen, but in the interests of trying to make this video as short as possible, um, I put them in the microwave just to get them going. And you can see they add um, a nice color there uh, with the green. So we've got this. I'm gonna have to taste this uh, quinoa and rice mix just to check to see how the rice is going. And if it's cooked, then we'll be able to drain it. So excuse me. Yeah, I think it's done. The other thing that's different with brown rice, if you haven't used it before, is because it still has the outside component of the grain there, you still do get a bit of a chewiness to it, even when it's fully cooked. So what you want to do is check that there's not that really hard kind of bitiness that you would get if it was if, if you were if you were trying uh, white rice and it wasn't quite cooked. You want to make sure that's gone, um, but you, it will still be a bit chewy, for want of a better word. But it's quite nice. So this is just bubbling along here. 
and I'm going to try and drain the um, the rice, but I forgot to get out my colander, so now I'm going to have to rummage through my cupboard. But you know what? This is real life. This is what cooking's like in the real world, isn't it? So let's do it together. <laughs> uh, so in the interest of doing this one-handed, I'm going to set my colander over like that. Excuse my dirty dishes that are still around. Hmm. I'm going to get some water running too. And then I'm going to grab my pot one-handed. Oh, and try and tip it in. So like I said, normally I would serve this with, um, with pasta and lemon juice, but I don't have either of those today. All right, so let's take this back over to the stove. So we're just gonna mix that through, really. And if I had two hands, in all honesty, I probably might have put in less than all of it to begin with uh, to see how much we needed. Because I don't think I actually needed all that um, whole cup of rice and quinoa mix that I used there. Okay. A little bit of a mess that's not uncommon for me when I'm cooking hi Katie thanks for saying hi um, so the next thing we're going to try and do I'm going to try and cut um, this lime I'm not sure it's going to really work one-handed oh here we go let me see if I can flick it around look at me go cutting one-handed all right we're just going to squeeze that in to our dinner. The other thing I didn't mention, and Jen forgot to mention at the beginning of her video too, but I think it's something we just do um, absent-mindedly, but we should always remind everybody, is to wash your hands before you start cooking, obviously. Um, so I did wash my hands with soap and water, saying myself happy birthday twice, um, to make sure that it was, make sure my hands were clean before I started. So we're squeezing this through. The lime here is gonna add a nice freshness to the dish. And like I said at the beginning, this is not perfect cooking. This is using what I happen to have available, what, what, I've, what I've managed to scrounge up um, when I went to the supermarket and it didn't have most of the things that I actually wanted to buy. <laughs> Um, and uh, with school, with uh, my daughter's school closing um, on Tuesday, it means I haven't had a chance to get there and do anything really. So the next thing we're going to add through, um, if I had more of this, I would add a whole bunch more. Um, but the last thing we're really going to do is add in um, this parsley. I'm going to chop it up before I add it in. So I might do that after we say goodbye. Um, the last thing I'll do over here, oh, sorry. is give this a little bit of a taste. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna to have to add some seasoning to this because like I said, um, the tuna was in spring water um, and I've just got really plain ingredients that we're adding in here. It's actually quite nice, which is good given that this is my um, lemon tuna pasta recipe and I didn't have lemon and I didn't have pasta. Um, I don't actually think it needs any salt personally, um, but you can add that to taste. Uh, what I might do is add a little bit of cracked black pepper as well, um, and then I will chop up my parsley and add it in. If I had more parsley, I would add like quite a big handful of parsley to kind of give quite a nice fresh flavour. Um, but uh, this is all I could scrounge up from my garden. And so that's what we're going to have for dinner tonight. Uh, what you'll find till, uh, later on tonight is I'll post a photo of the final product uh, and this video will end up going up on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, no fancy cameras, 
no editing, just real cooking for real life. Uh, if this recipe has been useful to you, please let us know. If you have particular items that you've found or noticed in your supermarket that you really don't know what to do with, please let us know and we'll do our best to try and uh, come up with some videos for you. Jen and I are going to be back a few times um, each week over the next several weeks, maybe, like, maybe a couple of months even, just showing you what we're doing to get by making tasty, simple recipes for our families uh, and hopefully they might be of use to you. So please let us know if we can help with providing any, um, any ideas around cooking for you at the moment because that's what we'd love to do. Uh, our, the purpose of our collaboration is to try and help empower people to cook for themselves and I think that's a really important thing to do at this time when we are trying to be physically distant but still socially connected. So please connect with us here on our Facebook page, over on YouTube, um, have a look at our website if you're interested. Like I said before, Jen and I co-wrote a book of 35 recipes called Easy Healthy Tasty a couple of years ago now. That book is designed for people who aren't really used to cooking in the kitchen, whether you're new to cooking, whether you're a person with a physical or intellectual disability, the purpose of Easy Healthy Tasty is to help you in the kitchen. Um, so please go and check that out and we'll see you later. Bye.